Hello everyone! This video is going to be the first one on drag action series in which we will discuss how drags work and all the principles underlying their actions. To begin with, we need to know what is a drag. Maybe when you ask yourself this question, a chemical that interacts with our body pops up in your mind as an answer which is absolutely correct, but it's not just that. Because the food we eat and the poisons we inhale or touch are also chemicals that interact with our body. Then, what is the proper definition of a drink? Here I've picked two ones. The American Food and Drug Administration defines a drink as a substance intended for use in diagnosis, cure, mitigation, treatment, or prevention of a disease. A more scientific definition can be as a drug is an agent which modifies a particular constituent of the cell in order to bring about a change in the functionality of that constituent. If we combine these two definitions here, we can get something like this, which defines the drug as a substance that interacts with our cellular constituents by causing a change in the constituent function and that results in an overall physiological response, which is intended for a therapeutic reason. So the key point we get from all these definitions is that a drug molecule must interact chemically with our cells to produce an action. In other words, the drug need to be bound to certain cellular constituent in order to work, which is one of the basic tenets of pharmacology. So what are these cellular constituents we're talking about? These are the drug targets, which are most of the time proteins. However, some drugs also bind to other molecules, such as the anti-tumor drugs that treat different types of cancer, interact directly with DNA rather than protein. Here are the four main kinds of a protein involved as primary drug targets which are receptors, enzymes, carrier molecules, also known as transporters, and ion channels. In this video, we will briefly outline them, but each one will be discussed alone in further videos. Receptors serve as recognition site for drugs and other endogenous ligands. Once the drug binds to the receptor, a train of reactions will be initiated inside the cell, leading to a change in any cell function. While in the case of enzyme, the drug resembles a substrate that binds to the enzyme's active site, therefore alters the enzymatic reaction. Apart from this, the movement of ions and small organic molecules across the lipid membrane is generally carried with the help of transporter or ion channel. So a drug that binds to these targets can prevent or modulate the permeation of different ions and substances that the cell require. Now, since we covered that a drug carry its action by binding to a particular target, you might wonder what makes a drug able to recognize its target from all the components inside our crowded body? Well, the answer in fact lies in the principle of target specificity, which states that for a drug to be useful as a therapeutic tool, it must show high degree of target site specificity. So if a drug is said to be truly useful, it should do what it is meant to do without any toxic or unwanted side effects. 
So how many drugs fit these criteria? Well, the short answer is none. There's no pharmaceutical product that has complete specificity. Therefore, the adverse effects appear. Think of dart board. The drugs that bind strongly and selectively to their biological targets are analogs to a dart that sticks firmly to the dart board in a high scoring position. The further away you move from the target, the less you score. And the same thing goes with the drug. The more they bind to other sites than the target one, the less desirable response they achieve. And this gives a rise to the unwanted side effects. So for a drug to be useful, it needs to be essentially specific. And with this, we reach the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it was helpful and see you in the next one.